it's uh Chris, you always cut out the best bits. Yeah, right. You know, we were just what have we talked about so We're far? Shelving evening? teachers being fucking idiots. Uh, Beep. Uh, Straight away, we yeah. talked about this last week. In the yeah. first four words, you've sworn, 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 and sworn, and sweared, sweared. That's sworn, sworn. sweared. We had four swear words in the last podcast, yeah. and one of them was not a, a, a above a twelve rating. It made me realise actually how easy it is to miss them in editing. Yeah, because I listened to it back afterwards, and I sh- said shit a couple of times. Yeah, in the middle, and I've been, been cutting them out now. We, no, no, no. We, we at the beginning, we <laughs> said, "Well, Ross ain't here, so this We're is going to be a family friendly show." And, and then, then we slipped up and went for yeah, a twelve. Rating. Yeah, we did talk about something that needed a few Fs, but yeah, yeah you've you've come back, and within the first four words, swear word. F bomb uh, as uh, well. See, you're making a mistake there. You're trying to cater to an audience that you don't have, as opposed to catering <laughs> to your <laughs> actual audience. Hi, demographic. I just, How are you? You just swear a lot. That's all it is. Yeah, but I like swearing on the podcast because <laughs> it's a bit of a release. Because <laughs> I spend, I work somewhere where you can't swear. So do I. <laughs> you can't talk where you work. <laughs> uh, anyway. Especially on a Wednesday. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to what we're we doing. The snooze button. Snooze, snooze button. That's the button. One. God, it feels like it's been a while, but it hasn't been a while. It's been less than a week. It has. Anyway, it, welcome to the snooze button, where we discuss TV, movie, and pop culture news for about half an hour, forty minutes, or something. And then you'll hear a little snooze button alarm, and then we'll we'll wrap up quick and bugger off and have tea. Or well, no, we won't. We'll record another podcast in truth. But yeah, you know, something like that. We have no listener emails this week, folks. Oh, if, come on. If you want to write in or, or anything, you can do. It seems to have dried up a little bit recently. Despite the fact we've got higher higher listening figures than ever, you guys aren't writing in. So, you know, drop Send us, us a line. message on the Facebook if you haven't all deleted it because of Cambridge Analytica. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, know, YouTube messages thingy. or uh, In person if you see us in the street. That's it. Poke, poke Adam with a stick. Um, yeah. Carry or, yeah, a pigeon. Or, or email, more specifically, snewwithcrew at gmail.com. Or podcast at snewnetwork.com. Easy. Got that? Good. Shall we continue? Yes. News. Well, okay. Box office then. Yeah. Guess what's at number one? Uh, the Quiet Film. Yeah. Quiet Place. Yeah. Has actually knocked it out of the park. It's got a, like a 50 million opening and it's only a 17 million. Uh, Double seven, what Ready Player One made. Yeah, it did. It made 25 yeah. million this weekend. Yeah. So uh, 17 million budget. It was made on a quiet place. It's a good. That's a good profit already. It is second biggest Friday to Sunday debut of the year, uh, bigger than Ready Player One. Also a deluge of pre and post Black Panther movies. Third biggest Friday to Sunday debut. Sounds inflation for any, not based on anything horror movie ever. That's pretty good going. I've got some Black Panther news. Have you? I missed it. Oh, you've not seen it's it. Not oh. the cinema, no. Oh. no. Don't. What are you going to do? I don't know. I need to see it before Avengers. You do, definitely. If it comes to it and it's like the day before Avengers, I'll just watch like a, I don't know, probably by then will be a Chinese version with like... Korean subtitles. Or like, yeah, like an English version with Korean subtitles. Yeah, fair. Or it would be really bad enough. There's to bound to be cam. one kicking around, I imagine. But yeah, look, um, while we're talking about China, Ready Player China. One... <laughs> Ready Player One is doing some huge... Numbers in China, which is quite handy, because apparently it needs to make five hundred million to even break even. I don't think it's going to. Well, it looks like it might do. After this weekend, it's got a worldwide total of three hundred and ninety-one, uh, and yeah, it took forty million in China this weekend alone. So if it does that again, it's it's very very close. Okay. So it should be all right. It's not going to be a box office smash by any. No, no. You know. Because it's already been knocked off by a, a 17 million little horror, horror flick. Film. Yeah. Um, which apparently was uh, being punted, or at least somebody approached them at some stage to make it into a Cloverfield movie. <laughs> I think we may have reported on that before. But, but they stick that badge on fucking anything, don't they? Well, you know what? Because of flipping the, the Paradox movie, technically you could argue that every single sci-fi alien movie that exists from now forevermore... Is a Cloverfield movie. Yeah, I still haven't watched it properly. It's I stitched, started stitched and then... everyone up with multiverse theory. Yeah. Bastards. It's wow. not... It, it actually, uh, there's two sides to that. It is worth watching. 
because it's hilariously bad in places. And at the same time, it's worth watching because there are some good ideas. Right. You know, it's 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 a funny movie. You can tell it used to be something else and they just crammed a bunch of extra scenes into it to make it into a Cloverfield oh, film. Right, okay. So they'd already finished the movie. And then went, this they, This could be a Cloverfield movie. Yeah, so they filled some, filmed some extra scenes, stuck those into the movie, and then, um, yeah, released it as Cloverfield. However, today, yes. the producers of, uh, of Quiet Place came out and said, <laughs> it was never going to be a Cloverfield movie. So, um, yeah, conflicting reports there. I don't know which one is right, really, but, you know. Wow, as long as cares? it's a good movie, I'm up for watching it. I'd like to go and see it. So one good thing that came off the back of this... Yeah. Quiet Place was uh, produced by Platinum Dunes, which is Michael Bay's company, right? Oh, right, okay. So they're going to stop making remakes of horror films. Good. I think off the back of this, the success success of this film. Because there's plenty of horror stories to tell out there. There's plenty of uh, stories to tell, you know, remake stuff. (laughs) This is just... Yeah, but it's, it's, it's not the most original thing in the world, is it? Well... It's sort of like... Half Night of the Living Dead, half Signs. Signs of the Living Dead. Silent Signs of the Living Dead. <laughs> so, yeah. Anything else you want to say about Quiet Place? I really I'm going to see it on it Wednesday. looks good. You're going to see it on Wednesday? Wednesday, yeah. Oh, I can't come with you, unfortunately. Oh, no, I'm going with my uh, better half. And? So it'll be a weird date. It's all right. Chris is coming. We could all hold Is Julie coming? No, she's we, at home babysitting. We could all hold Chris hands. Chris is just sat there looking at us. <laughs> I might just sit in the disabled box area and stare back at you <laughs> no, no, with no, a bag of popcorn. No, no, just don't even do that. Like, lay in it, but like in a really cheesy David Brent pose, just facing back, like on your side. Just hello, just spooning popcorn into your like mouth, like a Roman getting fed grapes. If I was with you, I'd just be spooning. <laughs> anyway, right. So uh, yeah, apparently this is a, a film that you want to see in a very quiet cinema. So. So not the local one then? Well, maybe not. Just don't take rustly food because he might piss off other people. Just wa- even in I'm Amer- just going to wait until it comes out on Blu-ray and or something and watch it with a mate. I'm not going <clears> to yeah. bother with a cinema. I've heard it's like that. It's one of those films that makes the cinema quiet. Even cinemas in America are quiet and they're never quiet. Oh, cool, interesting. People being respectful. Yeah, in the same way, like silent. Uh, what was the last film that really did that? Saving Private Ryan. Oh, really? Like, well, you know, it sort of, like, starts quite... It turns up to 11 very quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, true. And doesn't really let you off that hook at all. And it's the first time that anybody had really done it like that as well. Right. And the cinema was silent from that first opening scene. And, and then people filed out of the cinema and they just weren't really talking. They were just talking really quietly. And I was like... I said to the person I went with, I was like, that, that's changed. <laughs> I think it's changed me. I think you might have to repeat that. It's changed. No. <laughs> it's changed me. <laughs> but then on contrast, like, I went to see Borat at the cinema, and that was the loudest cinema I've ever been in, but because everyone was on the same page. I went with, like, 23 other people. Elaine. And the whole cinema was... Pa- <laughs> Dear God. And the whole cinema was absolutely packed. There were people sat in the aisles because there weren't enough seats. They like completely broke the rules. And uh, and everyone was just pissing themselves. I went with mates who were Christians, mates who were Jewish. So there was people that, you know, he's making jokes about in the film. And they loved it, you know, and that whole cinema. And everyone left pissing themselves with laughter, like the total opposite. Like they were, that, And that's the only time I've been to the cinema where it's loud and it's been okay. Yeah, Team America was like that. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, actually. I wish I'd have seen that at the Team cinema. Team America, but like the cinema boat, absolutely, like it was funny, but then this, actually the whole cinema broke when the AIDS song came on. <laughs> <laughs> like when it just went, AIDS, 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 AIDS. Everyone has AIDS. AIDS, AIDS, yeah. AIDS. And yeah, that was it. Like, it was like a dam burst, and they just... Um, Have you seen the uncut version? With the se- the dodgy sex, yeah. extended sex scene, yeah. Have you seen it, Ross? It's worth a watch. I've only ever seen it at cinema. Did they? No, nah, it was really only released. At, well, it wasn't released on in the DVD, UK. DVD, the extended one. It wasn't released one. in the UK at all. I don't think it's <coughs> even available. You have to like watch it in a, a foreign version. Right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like with a bit of uh, defecation, should we say? Oh. In the de- in the sex scene. 
It's so, <laughs> so funny. I, I imagine the subtitles are German. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Talking of Germans, Avengers Infinity War. Yes. It's What's that got to do with Germans? Germans in it, is it? Well, it might to have. To be honest. But it's tracking for the biggest opening weekend of all time, ladies and gentlemen. It might be the first movie to break $2 billion. Ooh. Chris gets so hard for financial figures for movies. I know. <laughs> it's going to make two billion. It means nothing to us. No, we're just going to be. A I'm quite sometimes quite surprised. Not not one percent of that two billion <laughs> that's come out of our pocket or <laughs> into Disney. It tells you something about the world, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's shit. And the, po- the population's growing. That Marvel is better than DC at making cinema. Well, yeah, this is also very true. <laughs> uh, new, new. Uh, well, it wasn't really a proper trailer. It was a TV spot. Did you, I put it up on our Facebook page. Did you see it? I did. No. Looks quite cool, I think. Yes. I'm quite quite up for it. I, I have a funny f- suspicion. The reason the graphics were slightly poor in the third part of Black Panther is because the money was being saved for Infinity War. I, I literally think a that's what it is. A movie will have its own budget. No, but I, I think... I, that. Yeah, but I don't... I, I think there was like... If we withhold some money here, we can invest that money it's over Disney. there. Yeah, but <laughs> think Gosh. about how much is going on just the actors for this film. The this one and doesn't matter. It's going to make two billion. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I mean. Like they've they've had to put the money in in the beginning. And it's, if the second one makes yeah. two billion dollars as well, then they've, they've bought four. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they paid for Star Wars. Yeah, uh, but yeah. they'll but they'll have spent two billion. Yeah, it's costing them two billion to make, isn't it? Or is it one billion? I can't remember. The, oh. This exponential growth can't continue. It's one billion. Why not? Because there's finite everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like I say, population density can only yeah, increase. Yeah, still, just that, so, that that's going to hit. That will hit critical mass at some point. Yeah, true. When people can't afford to, when there's not enough food, then that's when. <laughs> When there's go, not enough, there's not enough food, food We made now. three billion dollars <laughs> for the movie. What are you going to spend it on? Everybody's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got AIDS. <laughs> eight, 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 eight. Uh, brilliant. Uh, yeah. Apparently the uh, apparently the Soul Stone has been spotted in the latest trailer. If that means anything to either of you, but I, I just don't really trust what they put in the trailers anymore. No, so, no. Because they do that clever thing where they like digitally add and take things away. Or, like, sl- or slow things down or like, speed things up or yeah, remove yeah. things entirely. Well, or completely remake the film like yeah. Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's in the newsletter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like specifically like Thor, at yeah, the end of yeah. Thor Ragnarok. They've got the scene with him in the trailer without the eye patch on. So Yeah. Yeah. Which they've obviously done on purpose so that you don't yeah, go, throw people oh, off. look, he's got an eye patch. So it doesn't matter how many Infinity Stones have been spotted in that gauntlet on the trailer or in the trailer. It doesn't really matter. Well, there's five Infinity Stones in the Lego sets. Five in the Lego sets. And yeah. there's six in total, right? Yeah. Well, that's, that's annoying. Why? I don't well, know. If, well, they'll probably the bring out a second... Going? Right in the middle. Yeah. They'll so probably bring out a second a second wave of sets for it and then the sixth one will be in one of those. Well, of course, Lego will. They'll make yeah. 70 Thanoses. Well, there's only two. They they'll still they make won't, 17. No, they've, they've only got two, and they won't make more than that. They'll have one. How many hand solos are there? In this yeah, point? yeah, yeah. But in, in this set, they'll do. They've done the Infinity Wars sets, and there's like only one of each character other than Iron Man. There'll always be more than one Iron Man. Talking of hand solo, <laughs> yeah. There was a new trailer yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see it? Yep. Yeah. What do you think? It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> I'm. It's like I've blood from a stone. Come on. What do you I, think? I'm not interested in I Han Solo. I don't really care, but I'll probably go and see it. I'm going to go and see it, I, definitely. D- I won't go to the cinema to see it. I'll watch it when it comes out if someone buys it, but I'm not going to make any effort. Really? Yeah, I just... I like the way it looks. It feels like a Western. Can they stop... Well, uh, on this trailer. From this trailer, it feels like a Western. Yeah. Yep. Can they stop doing We're Putting a Team Together movies? Is this a request? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And merely an observation. And can you please stop making every robot the comedy... Uh... The actress who's playing the robot L3 sounds too much like Gwendolyn Christie for my liking. I just think they're always like, oh, we've got to make the robot really interesting. <laughs> and it's another origin film. That's yeah, right. just No, it's not. Well, it's we don't time... need it. Well, it's I too lo- late now. <laughs> it's been made, mate. I just want to see the Millennium Falcon get fucked up to the point where it looks like it does now. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's like, clean the fucker. If it looked that shiny new on the inside, 
It's not like leather where it wears. Do it's you like the pointy <laughs> nose? No. I like. I, d- I don't like the way it changes the shape. No. But like when they go inside and it's all new, I'm like, ooh, shiny new. Like a new Aston Martin. You could have tied it up a bit, Han. Yeah. But then you also think over the years, it's like, is that like a white leather that's now just shit brown? <laughs> See what you mean, yeah. While we're talking about Star Wars, though, the director of the Rogue One reshoots had a bit of an interview with the podcast this week, and he kind of tore Star Wars apart a little bit. Really? Yeah, a little bit. Hmm. He said, I've never been interested in Star Wars, ever, so I had no reverence for it whatsoever. I was unafraid about that, and they were in such a swamp, in such a terrible, terrible place, that all you could do was improve their position. So they didn't ask, um, was it who directed Gareth, Gareth Edwards? Gareth Edwards, was it? They didn't ask Gareth Edwards to come back? No. Who did the reshoots then? Tony Gilroy is his name. Right, okay. So yeah, he was he get, he was given a writing credit. Oh, he was a script doctor? Yeah. So, uh, but in, in, in effect, it was him that came back and and directed all of the reshoots and then pieced yeah. the film together and presented us with what we got. Funny, I watched a YouTube video today on someone piecing together from also like art book notes and stuff, possibly how the film ended. Right. Um, and yeah, it was just interesting. It's all, a lot of it was conjecture still, but... Where's that, sorry? Sh- it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube? Yeah. Is it a special edition? No, like it's as- just somebody's just gone through the really cherry picks through the shots in the um, and the dialogue. Right. And highlighted where the characters have changed from the dialogue changes. Okay. Um, I'm going to go and have a look at that. I like Rogue One, and I'd really like to see the original cut as well, to be honest. Not yeah. going to happen, mate. No, no, it's you not going to happen. You might as well join but- the fucking Snyder Cut <laughs> p- plebs. <laughs> I want to see a movie that doesn't exist. Interestingly enough, though, I thought I'd have a look at what Gareth Edwards has been up to since Rogue One, and well, he's got nothing going on at all. He's not appeared on IMDb. He's got no upcoming Probably movies or anything. Probably having some time off. Well, the last thing that he did, he played a Resistance trench soldier in the la- soldier in the Last Jedi. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's the one that goes, oh, salt. How is he? No, he's the next <laughs> to the one who does that. But right. semantics, uh, whatever. There you go. I thought he was that one. So taking a break or being forced to take a break? Who knows? If you know, <laughs> listening at home, write in and tell us. Because <laughs> we'd like to know. <clears throat> Neil Gaiman. We like Neil Gaiman, don't we? Yes. Yes. He's adapting Gormenghast for the television. Huh. Do you like Gormenghast? I have no idea. You've not heard of Gormenghast? I've heard of it. I don't know if I've read, watched or listened to anything that involves it. Well, according to Neil Gaiman, in the 60s, there were two major trilogies that lovers of fantasy just embraced. One was Lord of the Rings. The other one was Gordon Gormenghast by Mervyn Peake. And uh, it's been made for TV before by the BBC yes. ages ago. Yeah, um, I know what you're talking about now. Year 2000, yeah. I think it was. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty funky tale about people living in a castle, right? heirs to the throne, people that work all the way down in the kitchens and stuff and people trying to manoeuvre their way up through society. Who made the... What What channel was it? BBC, BBC. did it? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember it? Yeah, Christopher Lee's in it, isn't he? He is, yeah. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Very strange. Odd. Yeah, I don't think weird, I like it. Weird, crazy two twin sisters, one of them played by the mother from my family. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, she's the voice of... Um Someone in something recently that I watched. <laughs> I can't think what it is, but she's really. I really she's like definitely her. Definitely the voice of someone in something. She's she's very good at voice acting and as being crazy characters. So I can imagine her in something like that. Yeah, she did. It may have even been her playing playing both twins. I may be wrong. It might be a false mm. memory, but possible. So, do we like Gorman Gast? Are we excited? I'm not excited. Did you say it's Neil Gaiman? About anything. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Gaiman, yeah. Yeah, so you I'm fucking more excited. love it. I'm more excited yeah, well. about the, the Sandman universe that's starting in comics than Gorman Gasp. There's another on TV. one. Well, he's, like, allowed DC to basically... I think they're doing a, lo- a series as part of Vertigo um, of the Sandman universe, and there's going to be different writers taking on different sections of the Sandman universe. Yeah, well, and he's been it happens involved, quite a lot. He's been quite heavily involved with it, and the last lot of comics he was quite yeah. heavily involved with, actually. Yeah, That's but this is like linked to the main DC universe as well because of one of the main characters being Ooh. in the new stuff. So yeah. interesting. I'll have a look at that. Um, but yeah, actually, he's not going to be writing it. He's just putting together the team of writers who will write it, and then he'll just sort of oversee in the background. Cool. Sort of thing. 
uh, Gormenghast, I mean. But yeah, we mentioned Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings TV series. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> this is the Amazon one. It is the Amazon one. So it's it's definitely moving forward. Um, they, they paid a lot of money for that, didn't they? Quarter of a million. So, so they're just remaking the films as a hang series? Hang on, wait, no, no sorry. They quarter made, of I a th- billion. I thought they paid a billion for Qu- it, didn't Quarter they? of a billion. Um, that's 250 million, not 250,000 million. Yeah, because we're British, yeah. not Americans. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I think it's kind of a unified, agreed It has thing now, now, yeah. 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 Anyway, um, it's it will cost Amazon one billion to produce at the moment, as it stands. And kind of, an, uh, I suppose, a bid to try and cut some costs... They're going to use material from the movies. Right. So it's linked to the movies, but isn't just a remake. Well, it? look, it turns out in the in the fine print of their contract that they have control of material from pre- Peter Jackson's films. So, And there are all those sets and things that are still sat there, like unused and everything. Oh, so they, they, they haven't bought the rights to the book. They've bought, they've they've bought the... Rights to produce a Lord of the Rings movie... But it's not actually Lord of the Rings because Peter Jackson's company still own the rights to that. So they're right. making a TV series of something set in that world. Quite possibly the Silmarillion. So it could be like it could be like Krypton or Gotham, where it's just some hobbits laying around in the sun. <laughs> to be honest, hanging out, traveling back in time. I am. Yeah. I'm super excited for this. Yeah. I just, I just the thought of it definitely using the same aesthetics as every the thought of Weta making all the weapons and shit for it. Yep. Or using the weapons they've already made it and sets mean, they've already made. It does mean we actually won't when be. you think about it, if it's gonna be about the Silmarillion and stuff, uh t- t- fucking Hobbits aren't even gonna be in it. No. But Rivendell will be in it. Yeah. And it won't be recovering uh retreading the same ground. Which is good, and you're right. It'll and work. it'll be like Lord of the. It'll be like Game of Thrones. Tonally, well. it'll fit oh, with sick. everything, won't it? So, yeah. But I've, I've so heard people mentioning that Silmarillion is unfilmable. I don't know if have you, have you've ever read it. Mm, I, yeah, I it's it. unfilmable as a film, but it's um, well, just because it's a five thousand year history of Middle Earth. Right. Okay. It is. You know when they talk. You know when in Thrones in the books where they talk about all the shit that happened before. Yeah. Imagine if Tolkien wrote that book. Uh, no, if, if if Railroad Martin wrote that book. Okay. About West. You know, he's got he's got ideas in a pad. Yep. Tolkien did that, but he put it into a book. Right. I see. And it's pretty heavy read from the start because it it literally is. So I it's like it up before and looked at it, and it's loads of Elvish, like right from the get-go. So it's, so it's like, it's um, like well, J.K. Rowling's little heavy. pamphlet on monsters, but instead no, it's, it's an not. actual. <laughs> no, no, but instead it's an actual decent book. It is like. So yeah, to actually turn it into a film is very difficult because you've got, like you say, 5,000 years of history. It is, But it's pure detail, whereas yeah. J.K. Rowling's one it no, is, was just was a pamphlet. <laughs> Tolkien always had this thing where he was just sad that the English never had their own mythology because all we did was just worship the earth and stones and stuff. Oh, oh no, we got loads of stuff, though. Why when, when you go back, you've like got, like, mm. stuff to do with Excalibur and things like that yeah, that all link back, and then stuff before that that links to it, like, about gateways and um, demons Don't and Don't you mean stuff. Summerfield? <laughs> but Sorry. he... No, not in a They're solidified way like the no, Nor- no. Norse or Romans. People or don't remember it properly. Yeah. And um, he, so he, the way he birthed Middle Earth, Silmarillion, is that is that five thousand year history of Middle Earth. But some of it's sick, right? Some of it's cool, and shit turns up from in stuff in like weapons and stuff just turn up. Later so on yeah, in Lord of the Rings. So definitely something for Lord of the Rings fans to get excited about. By the sounds of it. Uh, the contract commits Amazon to a five-season at least run. Oh, that sounds amazing. And it has to start shooting within two years. And they have to be bang on it as well because the other thing with elves, they don't age. So you can't take <laughs> seven seasons. Yeah, it's true. You've got to get... Yeah, Cast 20 and 30-year-olds. And if you're going to spend a billion dollars on it, you want to get it right, <laughs> to be yeah. fair. So, yeah, talking about other stuff that we may or may not have to wait a long time for, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Season four. Um, Adult Swim aren't even working on it yet. Yeah, but we. Th- this is the thing with Rick and Morty. They say that, but it's not the creators that are struggling. It's Adult Swim themselves who don't know what to do to monetize it. They're trying to work that out. So they they haven't actually signed on for season four as of yet, and they won't do until they've worked all this out. It's exactly the same um, problem that they had with Adventure Time. So you know there was right, a massive yeah. massive gap between. 
this current season and the previous ones. Yeah. Where like 95% of people are streaming it or accessing it through third parties. Right. So. But then they get money from the third parties. They get, they get money from the toys. They, they get do. money from the comics. But they get money from. Nowhere, like, nowhere near what you'd get for broadcast. No. So, but then broadcast is dead now, pretty much. Well, to a degree. So um, they're trying to get people on board to, to actually watch it through their broadcasting. Well, I've always watched it on their website because they put it out to watch on their website. Yeah. So I don't pay for that. They've just got to work out how to monetize all of that properly yeah. before they sign on and then they can start work on season four. They could just do their own cheap streaming site. If they turned around and went, here you go, $5, four quid. For an Adult Swim streaming site, you can watch any of our back catalogue of anything we've made. They'd make absolute mint. Yeah, true. At this stage, it doesn't change anything because uh, they were looking at late next year anyway. At yeah. least uh, that's what yeah we reported a, a few weeks back. Um, so yeah, Mr. Poopy Bottle could be right about his Christmas beard thing yeah. that he mentioned. Do you know the thing they got to do with Rick and Morty? What's that? Kill it before it gets too tired. Do you think? You can't Simpson or Family Guy, it. No, true. no, no, no. I think five series is is where you stop. I don't think you go well, no, past you, that. You just make well, or, 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 or you, you do just do that thing where you go. You, it's be a bit like what they did with Community, where it'll be like it was good apart from the last season wasn't great because and but then they knew to stop. But I'd rather instead of just forcing themselves to do a series, they work on the ideas that are really, really good and really make sense. And just release a couple of episodes here or there. Like, if they release two episodes in the next six months and then didn't do anything for three or four months and then release one episode and just... Do, instead of doing, like, ten episodes because they feel they have to do ten episodes and then three of them aren't as Probably good... Probably keeps the cost down. Certainly does with a TV show because obviously yeah, you have maybe, to pay the actors for their time. If yeah, you can, true. If you can get them to shoot for two months. But then most of the people involved in... Um, the voices, voices and stuff of Rick and Morty is like a main cast of about four or five people. So it's not difficult to get them together when they work in the same place doing voices for the other cartoons on Adult Swim anyway. Oh, that'll be put, the snooze button then. Oh, oh, this is a noise that has been edited and put in in post-production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... How would you like that for an alarm clock? Oh, God. Sam. Sh- <laughs> get up, get up. Get up, you lazy fucker. Just Get sounds up. like my missus, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so quick couple of things. Do we like the raid? Yes. Yep. The main guy, is it Iko Uwe? Yeah. Yeah? He's going to be in Stuba, Dave Batista's new awesome. comedy thing about, uh, what is it, an Uber driver that ends up being kind of, what, what did you, oh, commandeered for the evening so that he can go and catch a bad guy. Cool. Action comedy. We like ba- Dave Batista. Do you like Dave Batista, Ross? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Blade Runner was very good in that, wasn't he? He was. It's good to see his proper acting chops, actually. Although I suppose his part in Guardians is pretty impressive, to be fair. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not... It shows some good comedy timing, doesn't it? Yeah, he's not he's not just, like, standing there and that's funny. He's actually no. having to say things and get it the way it's said and how it's said and when it's said right. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adam describing acting. Yeah. <laughs> I, once I looked up Comical acting timing. in the dictionary and Adam went, yeah, and he stood there and he's saying the right things at the right time and moving at exactly the right movements that was rather required than, of him, of the director. That rather than acting. just standing there and not doing anything. <laughs> oh, <that way>. acting. <laughs> <laughs> How Berry. Do we like her? Who? Halle yeah, Berry. She, she's uh, cool, isn't she? She's all right. She's the one in Flintstones. Yeah, she is in Flintstones. She right. in She's Flintstones. also Storm from there. She was the yeah. hot secretary in <laughs> Flintstones, wasn't she? I don't remember She's that. She's a Bond girl. Blimey. She's also in... Didn't um, see that Bond. Swordfish. Catwoman. She's Catwoman. She's that Catwoman. was awful. Didn't see that. She's in Swordfish, didn't she? <laughs> Haven't seen that. Famously in Swordfish, to be fair. But yeah, um, she's going to be in a remake of Jagged Edge, which is a courtroom drama from the 90s. Isn't it an Alana Smarset album? No, that's Jagged Little Pill. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, it's a courtroom drama from the 90s. San Francisco heiress, brutally murdered. And uh, her her husband, Jeff Bridges, is accused. And uh, the lawyer, Glenn Close, starts an affair with him halfway through the trial and starts to think, ooh, something's a bit wrong about this bloke. Which sounds intriguing. I quite like the sound of it. But is it... Is it... Do courtroom dramas do well these days? I don't know. Some of them. The one about what's-his-face, the... the guy that was in Naked Gun was very good. Law and Order always seems to go down well with OJ people. Simpson. People against OJ Simpson. 
Have you seen it? No, right. I did. There's a really good ESPN documentary on OJ Simpson. I think I've seen that on and it's massive. Advertised it's on like, YouTube. Um, it's huge, but it's really well done because his rise coincides with the civil rights movement in America as well. So it's intersected Ooh. with that. Like when I talked about that Vietnam documentary, yeah, it all fits. But what we did is we got up to the trial, and then we were going to watch the People versus OJ Simpson. And then go back to the documentary so that we could watch the trial as dram- dramatically interpreted, right? And then see it factually, okay? So that because like a lot of these things, like Anna doesn't always know what happened. Yeah, sure. Well, I didn't know what happened at all. No. So is, um, that, is the People versus OJ? Is that the one with David Schwimmer in? Yes. Right. Okay. It's really good. Yeah. It's really, right. really yeah. good. Really enjoyed it. The best. I, I've seen it twice. That's you know pretty impressive for a tv series to be fair yeah and, you know, it's got to be good for you to go back and rewatch. the best factual thing i ever got somebody to watch and got a reaction from was uh control you know the story about ian curtis i've never seen it actually yeah. it's really good yeah uh but the person i was watching it with didn't realize he committed suicide <laughs> So oh wow! They, so they were bawling their eyes out, going, "Why did you make me watch this film?" <laughs> oh, oh dear, it's funny, but at the same time, it's quite sad. It's a brilliant film. <laughs> it's fucking. Okay. I've accidentally done that to a few people with Man on the Moon, where they don't realise he's going to die at the end, right? And then they get really upset. Oh, yeah. well. Mr. He's Charles Darwin dead. in the he's the president match. of the United States. <laughs> this is very true. He's Donald Trump. <laughs> oh dear. Right, High Fidelity. Do you remember that movie? John Cusack, Jack Black. Yep. No. Nick Hornby book. Yeah, that's the one. There's a TV series coming. But the main the main character is going to be a, a, a female. Okay. Oh, Sorry. and they're going to tone down the uh, the language in it because it's being targeted for Disney's new streaming service. Bollocks. What? All of that sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess they won't be asking me to write a script then. Probably not. <laughs> Why the hell are Disney doing it? I don't know. But that's happening. Uh, Luke Cage... Season two is obviously on its way, Yay. and uh, it's been confirmed that he's going to be teaming up with Iron Fist in this season. Yay! Which hopefully means that Iron Fist isn't uh, getting a second season himself. So, Red Sonia. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember Red Sonia? I do. Do you remember the fact that bloody there have been twenty scripts for it? No. Up until now, I think there's been absolutely shed loads. I don't know how many times in the last year. I think it's three. I think this is the third time that we've reported that Red Sonia is having a script rewrite. Um, I just give up. It's just, well, <laughs> but apparently the success of Wonder Woman has given it a bit of a push because you know themes and there's stuff. so many better female characters they could reboot or remake or, or original material. I bloody likes Red Sonja actually. I really yeah, like the, but... the film. Did you? I think we covered this last time we reported, but it was such a long time ago. Did you know that Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in that movie? Is not Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, I know. I knew that. Did you? Yeah. I don't even remember. What's his name? Oh, Prince that's the thing I noticed. It's from Prince uh, Calidor. Anyway, sorry. It's just some just reminded me of something from that period. Uh, somebody in Ready Player One doesn't somebody use the spinny thing from Krull? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. And a, a Mad Ball as well. There's a bomb. A what ball? A Mad Ball. A Mad Ball. Do you remember Mad Ball? Oh yeah, yeah. She's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but the, that's less. That was less subtle than the spinny thing from Crowell. The the shield from um, Clash of the Titans was even more subtle, I think. That was just a throwaway moment. Anyway, the script writer is going to be Ashley Edward Miller, who's just been working on the reboot of Big Trouble in Little China, Adam, which might interest you. Ah. Yeah. Which you may or may not be interested in, but... He's also involved with a, a TV series called Law, which is based on a podcast which I've seen all of. It's, it's oh, pretty okay. good. It's just weird, really weird things. like Strange stuff how, happening. Or... Yeah, and how they affect, I suppose, culture and things of, of different countries. Like oh. the last one I saw was about leprechauns and, and stuff in, leprechaun. in Ireland. And leprechaun. how they believed that like these these folk from oh it's the fairy folk specifically yeah would take people away and replace you with a doppelganger and the way that if a husband was just bored of his wife he'd just uh, accuse her of being replaced by the f- fairy folk sort of thing and, and <laughs> they'd, they'd just put her on trial and kill her and uh, wow yeah. it's pretty nasty and the last case of it was lots to be said for the effects of Guinness isn't there yeah, the last <laughs> case of it was surprisingly recent go and watch the TV show. Was it's it as recent law. as the last person that got hung for forging an ace card in a 
deck of cards. What? When was that? The 60s. <laughs> in this no, it country. Wasn't that. It wasn't that recent, no. But yeah, I think it was like the 1940s or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, don't quote me on that. Go and watch the show. Hugh Laurie is going to be in Catch-22, the TV series. As in a TV series of the book? Yep. Oh, With okay. Major Major and all that lot. Has anyone, anyone read it? No. It's quite good. Yeah. It's a bit of a brain tease. Anyway. Nicholas Cage apparently thinks he'll be the perfect Joker. No. No, you won't, Nicholas. Shut up. Exactly. He's a very good Batman, though, isn't he? He is a very good Batman, and he's going to be voicing Superman, I think yeah. we said a couple of weeks back in... Uh, T-Titans Go to the Movies. That's the one, which yeah. I'm quite looking forward to. It'll be better than any of the DC live-action films. <laughs> yeah. And we found out this week what killed Jenny in Forrest Gump. AIDS? It was the AIDS. <laughs> Strangely enough. And there was a discussion online about whether or not her child would contract AIDS. She had AIDS. AIDS? Hippie AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Got the Hades. Oh, no, and one last thing. The Last Starfighter. It's been confirmed for a remake. Yeah, the director and original writer... Or the, oh, the Gary, original writer has uh, actually said yes to someone. Yeah, because oh, he turned somebody else down and then they went and He did, turned down uh, a lot of people over the last 20 years. It's the most recent one, Seth Rogen? Seth Rogen, yeah. So he went and did Future Man instead, Yeah, which is, yeah, it, it actually suggests in the script that it is a rip-off of the it's stuff. Gary it? Witter but is working on it, isn't it? Oh, is it? The yes. guy who wrote the story for Rogue One. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wrote Book of Eli. Cool. So it might well be very good. Yeah. Yep. Cross fingers. Crossed fingers. Right, trailers, there's only a few of them. We'll just whiz through them. The Purge, the prequel, the first Purge. Which Go away. Apparently they're very good. I like the first one. and Apparently I, the second one's far better. The second one's okay as well. Um, I, I just can't bother now. They don't need to do any more, otherwise you're going into well, sort of territory. Well, good, isn't it? Because it'd be like, I like... Oh, a, pl- like. a pleasant world. Let's now have a Purge. Like, yeah, I like, there's no reason for a prequel. I like knowing why these things happen. I like. I don't like just being dumped in a dystopian future. I like to know how it happened. I like the Rick and Morty one. I like. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why Dawn of the Dead's so fucking good. Well, you don't know because it's smack back. It's smack bang right at the start of the collapse of civilization. And yeah, yeah. In the remake, it happens in about four minutes. The world goes to shit, doesn't it? Right, yeah, 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 true. I love how cra- I love how quickly it all falls apart. Very true. Um, but yeah, and Pur- it annoys Purge me in a Hands Made Tale where they have to keep going back and sh- telling you in flashbacks how it all happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do what they did with Cube and stuff, and just leave the reasons alone. You don't need to know a purge. The films are good enough. It's just how it started. That's all. It doesn't need to. It, it won't have to have another prequel, I don't think. There's no need. No, they'll probably do a sequel to the prequel. Well, and yeah, then they a will, prequel they make to a the third episode film. one. Yeah, but then a it becomes Phantom like purge. Saw. And they then make a lot of money. They'll, it'll end up being like Saw. Which um, also made a lot of money. Yeah, but they're rubbish. Episode yeah. two. You don't have to watch them. Attack of the Purge. For people that want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's not about good filmmaking. It just becomes about the, the gore factor instead of actually a good storyline. And then what's the point? Like, episode saw, three. It's just about making Revenge money. Revenge of then. the Purge. <laughs> <laughs> the Purge Strikes Back. The Phantom Purge. The last purge. And then another. The last purge fighter. Anyway, there's another a Bloomhouse movie coming out called Upgrade, which you might well like the look of. Go and have a look at the trailer. It's about somebody putting a new graphics card in the computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, IMD. No, it's about selling your PlayStation 4 and then going into CEX and trading it in for a PlayStation Pro. <laughs> <laughs> It's about a guy who's in an accident and loses the ability to walk. And, uh, so they put him in a wheelchair <laughs> with go faster stripes on. Lumber man. <laughs> they uh, they stick a chip in the back of his neck that can upgrade him, and it and it kind of gives him an AI operating system type thing in his head, and uh, it looks like he has no control over his body. So he goes and ends up being this sort of superhero character and he's in these really gory bloody fights with all this stuff going on in his vision and things and it's like what the hell why is it targeting people and things and um but he has no control he has no control and he's like what's going on that actually could be quite fun it's like john wick on steroids <laughs> amazing uh, uh what's the uh the other movie oh uh hardcore henry that was just yeah that was great fun so it's like a cross between hardcore henry and john wick basically nice i've not seen hardcore henry yet it's, it's great fun yeah 
As long as you can cope with an hour and a half of first person. Oh, is that point the first person? Oh, fuck that. Yeah. It's I great. To have a go. It's great Ooh. fun. I can't Ooh. get Ooh. the missus to watch it. So. Yeah. <laughs> keep, Ooh, thank you. Keep bringing it up every now and then. Maybe I'll try again tonight. Uh, Terry Gilliams, uh, the man who killed Don Quixote, has finally been filmed. There's a trailer for that this week. Really like his films. I just nobody has ever nobody in the history of cinema has ever struggled to get a movie made like this man, have they? No, it's not the first I time either, is it? Every single time, pretty much, mm. there's been problems. I mean, his him and Del Toro is very similar, isn't he? In that respect, like their their list of unmade stuff must be longer than yeah, their yeah, list true. of made stuff. True, but even their made stuff quite often like nearly doesn't get made because like someone will die or. Like a company will go bust, or like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's so like many luck. things of bad luck just happen, and he still ends up making fantastic movies. And both of them, like, in 50 years' time, they're going to be thought of in the same sort of like category as like Kubrick, aren't they? Somebody yeah. on a podcast in 20 years' time will be putting their heads in jars, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I imagine. I think Terry Gilliam deserves that already, but. Do we know the story of Don Quixote? Um, it's about a, a guy who reads too many kind of hero novels and decides that he's going to be a hero and goes off and gets himself killed. I think trying uh, to be I can't remember. trying to rescue people and just be kind of yeah this dramatic hero in the old Spanish West, basically. Always right. up for that. That's good. Sounds pretty cool. The movie it looks as if he's going to do like was it him that did the Fisher King? Yeah. So like the flashing backwards and forwards between two like times um so the guy that thinks he's don quixote might think that he's living in like 16th century spain but he's living but in now. actual fact it's a modern excellent yeah thing it's a modern timeline it's shame it? robin williams isn't alive well it's the guy that played the uh the sparrow from game of thrones not right. that that would interest you adam but i'm not sure who that one is playing don quixote and uh adam driver from oh, okay he's pretty good i've seen him in a few other things recently plays uh, Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren, that's, that's the one. one. Yeah. Not so daft Kylo Ren. Let's burn it all to the ground and start again. The movie's being, by the looks of it, released by a Spanish company. Possibly. Cool. So, yeah, the, the, the trailer's a bit possibly confusing, but yeah. <coughs> Go and have a look at it. Tone, uh, Johnny English. Do we like a Johnny English movie? They're all right. It's Saturday afternoon, silly fun, Sunday hangover movie. Johnny English Strikes Again, there's a trailer for that. That's on our cool. Facebook page. What so about a Saturday hangover? If you go out on a Friday, is that allowed? I don't know. I haven't had one of those for a long time, so I don't care what you do. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but I still think it's amazing we're on a third film and each one's been years apart and they're all based on a character from a Barclays advert. Well they done. Are, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Well done to him. But he's a bloody good like, yeah, exactly. comedy writer, isn't he? Generally, yeah. I think most of what he does is, is pretty dependable. Yeah. You know? Oh, hoible. What, what? I'd rather have a sequel to The Pro Officer. The Parole Officer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen that. Is that Fucking one of his? I just no, forgot Steve that. Yeah, ah. yeah. He goes good. on a roller coaster ride. He's like, oh, but he's so much like he's not quite Partridge, right? There's a bit more to him than Partridge, but he just does these little Partridge moments. So he's like, he's like on a roller coaster. He's like, I'm still being really sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, funny film, that. Yeah, forgot about that. Cool. Um, right, and then last few, there's a, a movie called Lean on Pete, which is a, a Charlie Plummer coming-of-age drama about some guy with a horse. Um, there's <laughs> <laughs> Make that sound interesting. I know, I know. <laughs> Kevin Hart, there's a uh, a new Kevin Hart movie called Night School, where he's just kind of... Uh, Loud and abusive. He's a salesman that gets uh, fired from his job and then realises that to get another job, he needs to be better qualified and so finish he goes high school. So goes to school and is yeah. loud and abusive. Yeah, basically. Cool. Fair enough. Chris, you're doing that thing again. You're looking for an audience we don't have and not talking to our audience. <laughs> From the producers of Ride Along. It was funny. Oh I like the one that The Rock was in as well. That was that was good. CIA, whatever it was. Central Intelligence. Central Intelligence, yeah. that's the one. And Neil Gaiman, again, how to talk to girls at parties. That looks good. It does. And it's going way beyond the original story, which good. is quite cool. The original story being that a bunch of teenagers turn up to a party and there's some aliens at the party. Yeah. Whereas this one, they turn up to the party, the party's all aliens, and one of them takes an alien home and it's like all the stuff that happens when you take an alien home to be your girlfriend. Awesome. So yeah, set in London, 1977, starring Elle Fanning, Matt Lucas and Nicole Kidman. It's a weird cast. It's How many impressive. times? I like two of them. 
How many times would you ask an alien if you took an alien home, your vagina doesn't bite my dick off, does it? Just to be sure. You just would be like, please don't bite my dick off. Here comes my penis. Just use a carrot. Just test it. <laughs> Here know. comes my penis. You're saying it like someone <laughs> feeding a child. Exactly. Here comes my penis. <laughs> choo choo <laughs> in the tunnel. <laughs> oh, God. I should really cut that out. Um, <laughs> no. <you shouldn't>. no. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, and that's it. All of those trailers are on our Facebook page. Snoo with the crew, go and find us and uh, give us a like while you're there, please. That would be amazing. If you want to look at anything that we do outside of the podcast, so Adam's poetry and comedy and Ross's PlayStation handle and my music and... You always say that shops. like I've got a handle on my PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, it's a wind-up PS4 Pro. <laughs> no, I just I carry it around. like I just like, I went, do you know the best thing about the Game Gear, GameCube is that it had a handle. My PlayStation 4 needs a handle, so I just... Glued Bit a wooden one. handle onto it. <laughs> <laughs> I might do that on They mine. know what I mean at home, and therefore they will come and find you and kill you with a tank. <laughs> one day. Be good, wouldn't it? If there just loads of people just turned up in Battlefield and just went, right, there he is. Yeah, if I haven't played Battlefield for months, <laughs> mate. Everyone in uh, Fortnite on, like, all just team up against you. Mate, that's what happens in Fortnite anyway. No, 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 but literally, <laughs> you're, they don't you're kill always each other. getting teamed up on. No, but they won't. none of them kill each other. They just all kill you, and then they skip out of the game and go into the next server you're in and just do the same over and over again. That's what playing... Po- that's All that's you've described there yeah. is <laughs> Fortnite. Yeah, but people stay after you're dead and carry on playing normally. Yeah, that's what happens. Anyway, yeah, but they wouldn't. Talk of Fortnite. You. It's, it's <laughs> taken us about a fortnight to record this podcast. It so has. Should we, should we stop? Yeah, just an honourable mention to the masters oh, yeah. of all of the universe. Libsyn and Stitcher. Thank you for producing all of the aforementioned movies. You beautiful beasts. Thank Is that you. it? Yeah, I, I yeah. can't think of anything funny to say about Libsyn <laughs> and Stitcher this week. Paul's normally the best of them, isn't he? He's pretty good. I yeah. think Paul's quite quiet on the podcast. That's because he spends 45 minutes thinking about what Libsyn and Stitcher are going to do. <laughs> <laughs> he may look as if he's powering down, but it's for a reason. A lot of calculations going on there. He's our own little C-3PO, isn't he? Sort of. Because he's, like, he's about the same amount of autistic, isn't he? <laughs> the C-3. He's You're like, listening, Paul. We love you, mate. Down. You need to come back. Where are you? I'm I'm terribly awfully polite, but I'm um, I'm just gonna sit in the corner and pile down. <laughs> Lips and the stitcher, yeah, they're dicks. <laughs> Say right, goodbye. Right, right, right. Let's uh... Say goodbye. Adam. Bye. Bye. See goodbye. you soon, guys. Bye. Thank Ta-ra. you very much for listening. Bye. Cheers. Ta-ra. Bye. 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 Have we said bye yet? Bye. 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 Eight.